Let's talk about the blood-brain barrier. What is the blood-brain barrier? It is a protective area around the blood vessels in the brain that prevents blood and the contents of blood to move freely around in the brain. Our body wants to make sure to protect our brain at all costs. After all, it is making almost all the decisions in the body. Now, where exactly is the blood-brain barrier? I'm going to draw a schematic diagram here. If I had to make a very crude schematic diagram of the brain, it will start off with the skull, then the dura matter, arachnoid matter, and the innermost lining is the pia matter. And then we have the brain. In between the arachnoid matter and the pia matter, there is the subarachnoid space. Inside this subarachnoid space, there are blood vessels. These blood vessels are floating around in this subarachnoid space, and this area is filled with cerebrospinal fluid, or CSF. So you see, blood vessels in the brain are not everywhere. These blood vessels are not running down into the brain. They limit themselves in the subarachnoid space. Blood drains its contents in the CSF, in the subarachnoid space. CSF basically bathes the whole brain and it carries its contents that the blood releases from the subarachnoid space to the brain because the brain needs the nutrients that the blood carries. Brain just wants to make sure that it is only getting what it wants. This draining of blood vessels is very selective. There are no free interactions where the contents of the blood just spills over from the blood vessels into the CSF. Now let's zoom in a little bit here in the subarachnoid space. And let's say this is a cross section of the blood vessels. If this is the cross section, then these would be the endothelial cells that makes the lining of the blood vessel. What's important to understand here is that endothelial cells in this part of the brain are non-fenestrated and they have something called tight junctions. These non-fenestrated endothelial cells with tight junctions would make the first layer of support for the blood-brain barrier. The endothelial cells also sit on the basement membrane that also supports the structural integrity of the blood-brain barrier. And then finally, there are the astrocytes. Astrocytes are glial cells. Well, it's a type of glial cell because there are other glial cells like Schwann cells, oligodendrocytes, microglia. Just like them, astrocyte is a type of glial cell and they have these projections or food processes that projects all the way throughout the blood vessel and maintains a third layer of support of the blood-brain barrier. If this is the blood vessel, then the astrocyte food processes would be lining the entire blood vessel in the central nervous system. It's almost as if the astrocytes are latching on the blood vessel and the feet following the blood vessel everywhere in the central nervous system. So finally, the blood-brain barrier would be composed of the non-fenestrated endothelial cells with tight junctions, followed by the basement membrane, and finally, the astrocytes would complete the entire structure of this blood-brain barrier. I just want to clarify here that the presence of astrocytes lining the blood vessels in this way has nothing to do with it eating up or destroying all the bacteria and viruses in the blood vessels. 
that's not the function of astrocytes. Some of the functions of astrocytes are development of neural connections, it removes neurotransmitters from synaptic cleft, communication with neurons, with chemical messenger, maintain normal electrolytic composition, protecting neurons from toxic substances, potassium metabolism repair, and maintaining the blood-brain barrier. It's a physical support in maintenance of the blood-brain barrier. Now let's look at a typical capillary wall of a typical blood vessel that is not in the brain. These would be the endothelial cells. And in between the endothelial cell, there are pores. And these pores would allow hydrophilic molecules to cross easily through this space. Now let's look at the capillary wall of a blood vessel inside the subarachnoid space. These would be the endothelial cells that make up the blood vessel. And these are not fenestrated with tight junctions. So the pores that were here on the left are not available in this blood vessel. The hydrophilic molecules that could just freely go across on the left now has to be transported across because the pores are really small due to these tight junctions. So to wrap up this topic of blood-brain barrier, I would like to mention that these non-fenestrated endothelial cells in the central nervous system is not present everywhere. There are some select areas where there are no blood-brain barrier, where there are fenestrated endothelial cells in the blood vessels. These include median eminence, area postrema, preoptic recess, paraphysis, pineal gland, endothelium of choroid plexus, pituitary gland, especially neurohypophysis, also we can call that posterior pituitary, which is responsible for releasing ADH into the blood. Collectively, these are called circumventricular organs. Many of these participate in hormonal control. And lastly, let's talk about some pathology of the blood-brain barrier. These would include stroke, infection, brain tumors, brain surgery, just to name a few. When there is damage to the blood-brain barrier, there is risk of vasogenic edema. It is swelling of the brain because the barrier that was limiting the flow of substances is not there anymore. This can cause changes in behavior, cognition, toxic substances can now enter the brain, it can also cause morbidity and mortality. So it is very important that if there is damage to the blood-brain barrier, it is treated immediately and also the cause of the damage is also treated.